two, one. Okay. <laughs> I can count forwards, okay. <laughs> Backwards gets a little. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you, Sherry, for, uh, again, helping us with uh, uh, sign language today. I I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Mayor Nelson uh, for being uh, with us here today. Mayor Nelson and I have been in, in close uh, collaboration uh, for the, the bulk of this and will continue to be, and I appreciate his support. Uh, Mayor Mooney as well. Obviously, uh, Mayor Nelson and Mayor Mooney have been in close collaboration throughout this, and I appreciate Mayor Mooney's uh, collaboration as well. And, uh, and I'd also like to thank uh, Brazos County Judge Dwayne Peters for being here as well and for all of his support uh, during this unprecedented time. In our duty and commitment to provide you with the latest information, uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic, we elected to move Mondays press conference up to today. Uh, this is in light of uh, newly discovered information. Uh, a local gentleman in his 30s without travel history has been diagnosed with COVID-19 disease. The patient was diagnosed at an emergency room under appropriate precautions and appropriately dismissed home with instructions. He is doing well and he's being checked on regularly. In addition, we have another case of a gentleman in his 20s uh, who uh, did have travel history. He had traveled to New Mexico. Uh, in many ways, uh, this is not surprising, yet we must be clear it is significant. This is the first demonstration of community transmission of COVID-19 in Brazos County. Although the recommendations that we and other public health agencies have been advising over the past several weeks does not change, it must again be emphasized. It is critical that each and every one of us does our part to stop the chain of viral transmission. We need to be clear that this is not reason for panic. This is not a reason for anxiety. This is a reason to act with common sense. This is the reason to heed the recommendations of the public health agencies and the directives of government officials. I assure you that the Brazos County Health District continues to work closely with these government officials and local health care facilities, as we uh, mentioned yesterday's press conference, as we got to meet uh, these folks, to ensure collaboration and cooperation during this unprecedented time. We continue to work hard implementing what is known sound public health practice, but we also remain open-minded to innovative, to creative approaches that best use the immense talent and expertise that we are blessed with here in Brazos County. We are all in this together. We are doing this for our vulnerable neighbors who depend on us to do the right thing. By all definitions, this is a unique situation. Let us keep in mind that the measures that we have recommended from the health district and that have been directed from our collaborating government officials have been implemented prior to the demonstration of this first community case. This gives me hope. This gives me uh, assurance that the timing was right. I know that we will continue to encourage one another. I know that we will continue to help those in need. We're going to continue to arm ourselves with, with sound scientific information, with expert authored information, with, with good sound evidence. And in particular, I want to thank each and every one of you. I want to thank the media for helping us get out good information throughout this process. And I want to say that, that I'm inspired. I'm inspired by this community response. I'm inspired with how many people have stepped up, wanted to help, wanted to see what they can do, wanted to see how they bring their treasure and talent to the table and, and what they can do to help. 
That is the spirit of Brazos Valley. It's the spirit of this county. It's the spirit of, of our neighborhoods. And we will continue to do this. Uh, I will I'll now take questions. And um, Sarah, how much time do we have for questions? OK, good. So we have some time for questions. I'll open this up, and, uh, and, and I'll remind you that uh, uh, I, if, if I don't repeat your question, please remind me to. I've uh, forgotten to do that in the past, as I've been reminded. Thank you, sir. We're on a delay here from the uh, from the phone line. Any questions at all from anybody? Sonny from Kayag. Hey, Sonny. Hi. So Governor Abbott said that he will be providing more means for testing for COVID nineteen. So will the county from the, uh, from the phone line receive more testing? Any questions at all from anybody? And and I'm sorry, Sonny, you were very clear. What's not clear is the reverberation I'm getting through here. But but I, I think that your question uh, revolved around testing, and it's a good question. And that is the question on my mind as well. There have been, um, there was uh, just news today uh, that uh, the Mayo Clinic, as one of the private labs, had increased its capacity to, I want to say, 4,000 tests daily. And so we are seeing these national trends. Now, I've been in touch with... Uh, a friend of mine who was in that lab up there, his words were, they are tasked. Uh, so although we say that there are tests available uh, and we see these numbers, we have to remember that in the real world, there are people that have to run all these tests and there are uh, constraints in getting the resources to do those. Uh, I do not uh, want to stand here and promise that we are going to have uh, testing available for every person who has symptoms. I don't think that that's a realistic strategy under these, under these resource limitations and under the immense demand nation and worldwide. And so all of the plans that we have been working on, uh, the, uh, the gentleman you met yesterday who, who we're, we're also in touch with very closely from the, uh, the uh, healthcare facilities, have been anticipating shortage of tests. And I think it is critical that we remember that the tests best serve those who are high risk, those who uh, are 65 or older, those who have uh, other illnesses that would put them at risk for severe COVID-19. Heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, uh, low, low immune systems. And uh, those tests are critical in treatment for those individuals and for identifying those who are at high risk. And so those of us who are at low risk who, especially over the, the next week or two or three, as, again, we anticipate to have more cases, we can become more, um, uh, we can identify these symptoms as COVID-19-like. We can alert our, uh, our healthcare uh, uh, doctors, et cetera, however our chain of command to get up. We mentioned the 211 number, but also a primary care physician or whatever our healthcare access is, that, uh, that we have these symptoms. But we do not all need tests. Uh, the vast majority of individuals who get COVID-19 will recover on their own. Uh, but we will transmit. Those with the virus transmit. And again, uh, it is the vulnerable we are trying to protect. So it is critical to stay home. And uh, let me add, uh, please, not to ask another question until you allow us uh, about 15, 20 seconds to, to let the reverb go away. We'll let you know when you can ask a question. Thank you. Let me add, please, not to ask another question until you allow us about 15, 20 seconds to let the reverb go away. We'll let you know when you can ask a question. There you go. Happens all the time at council. I'm sorry. Teamwork. Dr. Sullivan, this is Kathleen at hey, Kathleen. ATX. You're saying it's best for people to just stay home. Um, we've been hearing from some folks about uh, the availability of pickup and to-go food orders. Do you consider that option to be totally safe, and why or why not? So the question, a good question, is about uh, what about to-go orders uh, for eating? Uh, you know, and, and we got to eat. You know, we, we you know we got so so I, again. I would come back to the, the to the common sense approach here. 
And, uh, and I know Kathleen's asking the question to get out the information about how important this is. And, um, you know, we have, um, you know, when we are in our car that we have been, and we are not getting outside of our car, uh, we are at low risk for trans, even if we are infected. Um, it would be best if uh, we had somebody who was not having symptoms, obviously, uh, going and picking that up for us and dropping it off at our door, perhaps, uh, or delivery services, et cetera, who would, uh, who would drop this off at our door. But we understand the principles of how this virus transmits. Now, we understand that how critical hand hygiene is. We've talked in previous press conferences about the 40 to 50 percent risk reduction that we see. It's as good as, the, you know, as, as several vaccines. And so, so we understand all of these principles and we apply all of these principles. Um, it, it, so, so, so to answer your question uh, directly, Kathleen, yes, you know, that, that's okay. Let's, let's, let's use our common sense and be creative about ways that we can get food and uh, that we can support our local businesses uh, that way as well uh, during this tough time. Um, it, it, so, so, so to answer your question uh, directly, Kathleen, yes, you know, that, that's okay. Let's, Let's, let's use our common sense and be creative about ways that we can get food and uh, that we can support our local businesses uh, that way as well uh, during this tough time. Uh, so, so to answer your question directly, Kathleen, yes. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Go, go ahead and ask another question. Guy. Hey everyone, this is Michael Oder from KBTX. Uh, those participating on the conference call, can we make sure that the microphone Dr. is muted? I feel like we have someone who's listening to the conference on, on delay, maybe on a computer or on television that's being picked up by an open microphone from conference participants. I think that will cut the delay out that we're hearing when Dr. Sullivan responds. Again, if you're on the conference call, can you please mute your microphone unless you are asking a question? Then you can open it, but you should also mute it afterwards so that we can try and cut the delay out. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Dr. Bill Oliver, WTAW, I apologize for uh, technical trouble on our end. I did not uh, get the opening statement about the latest cases. If you could repeat that information, please. Yes, the, the, the question was about the latest cases, and uh, to summarize, since, since most of us have heard this before, that the significant thing today, Bill, is that we have a, uh, a gentleman in his 30s who uh, has tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, significantly, this gentleman does not have a travel history. Uh, we also have another case of a gentleman in his 20s who does have a travel history. This gentleman uh, traveled to New Mexico. So those are the two new cases that we are reporting today to bring our total in Brazos County to six. We also have another case of a This is Kathleen from KBTX. Milan County has implemented a 9 p.m. curfew for minors. Can you speak to the effectiveness or lack thereof of a measure like this and whether Brazos County might consider the same? Uh, I'll let, uh, I'll, I'll speak, I'll speak from my perspective and I'll allow the mayor to speak from his perspective. I think that would be nice uh, from you to hear from both of us and the way that we look at this. I, I am not a policymaker. I don't know, uh, you know, the, 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 best, uh, the best or most implementable, if that's even a word, or ways to enforce uh, these types of things. What I know is the science. I understand how this is transmitted, and, uh, and I know public health practice and the things that have worked in the past. So these are the things that, uh, again, we're in an unprecedented situation, which means that we don't have a whole lot of history to inform us here about the best ways moving forward. But I do know that staying home works. And I do know that the more that we get the word out, which all of you are helping us do today, that we can, uh, in a way, positively peer pressure one another, perhaps, to stay home and to do the right thing. And the reasons why we're doing the right thing, that this is about our vulnerable neighbors. And uh, I, I can also say that all things are on the table. We are, we're trying to be creative, we're trying to be innovative, we are trying to do the right thing. And uh, that means making hard decisions and, and we'll continue to do that. 
This is Andrew Nelson, Mayor Bryan. Uh, I do want to thank, uh, am I close enough? Sorry. Yeah. I, I do want to thank Dr. Sullivan and the Health Department for all you're doing before I answer that. Uh, your, your collaboration, your advice, your expertise is essential in saving lives and keeping people healthy in our community. And uh, we need you more than ever now, and you're doing a great job. So thank you, and thank you all the staff and, and the hardworking people here. Um, we are uh, establishing, the Mayor Mooney and I with uh, Judge Peters are establishing at least a daily call to be in a conference on critical issues, key issues. Uh, some of them are public health issues with hospitals, uh, orders that we may be making so that uh, the right and the left hand of governments understand what each other is doing uh, with the goal to be as aligned as we can and to be in concert. Uh, we do have to sign uh, orders. There's mechanics that go with that. So. When I say as much as possible, understand that we are collaborating highly. Uh, we are all uh, working in, in close partnership, and I want to thank the county and the uh, city of Colchester and the surrounding uh, cities and counties as well, the whole Brazos Valley. Um, the, uh, the judge and I uh, just conferred to make sure we're on the same page right now. Um, we are also daily um, meeting. Uh, I am having uh, it, several times a day meetings with Dr. Sullivan to make sure that we are on the same page with the latest information from the, the uh, health department, uh, his guidance, uh, the collective brain trust of the medical experts to give us their recommendations. A lot of these recommendations are black and white. Where they are black and white, we, I believe, have universally accepted them. Some of them, uh, there's areas of gray, and we have conversations, and I'll continue to do that. Uh, with the judge, with Mayor Mooney, uh, with Chancellor Sharp, Chancellor Hensley, with Blinn, who I'm also in contact with, and any other of our major, obviously our, our, our hospitals. Uh, to answer the question directly, we do not have a curfew. We are not uh, in the middle of d debating a curfew at all. Um, but with this um, escalation to proof of community spread, which we, I think, all understood was probably happening, whether we had testing or not, uh, we will certainly be asking the health department for their medical expertise on how to combat the, the spread of this virus so that we can make this a shorter term public health crisis and not one that's longer term. And if that is the recommendation, uh, you know, certainly we will consider that or anything else to put the, uh, to hold paramount the health and safety and welfare of uh, the Brazos Valley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And go ahead, please. Hi, this is Dr. Kenny. Sullivan. This is Kenny. What? This is Kenny Wiley from the Eagle. Um, and please forgive me if you already answered this. We're having some sound issues. Um, we were hoping that if you have information about uh, the new cases contacts, and uh, again, forgive me if you already said this, but we we're just hoping you could share more um, if you hadn't already talked about that. Ken, so much, Dr. absolutely, Kenny. Kenny's, Kenny's question, and a good question, is about the contacts, and uh, that is our question as well. That uh, contact investigation is already underway. Uh, the, the way that this works is that we are in touch with the patient. The patient finds out the patient is positive, and we go through a detailed history to identify uh, who the patient was around and a timeline. We try to figure out when the patient is contagious, when the patient is most likely to transmit, and we look for significant contact. We have to keep in mind that if, 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 if an individual uh, with COVID-19 is walking through a, uh, a room that is, you know, is reasonably populated, you may say, the likelihood of everybody in that room getting COVID-19 is very low. We don't consider that a significant contact. What we consider significant are those who he lives with, those who, uh, who he's around on a, on a prolonged basis, um, and, and, uh, and, and we keep that in mind. Uh, so uh, to, to answer your question, Kenny, yes, that, that investigation is ongoing. Uh, any individual who is a contact of him will be notified. They'll uh, be notified that, uh, that you are a contact, and, and we should use the term primary contact, a first contact. A contact of a contact of a contact, you can start to see how this becomes less and less likely that we are going to transmit disease. And uh, uh, so, th so the primary contacts, those who are most likely 
Uh, it's still not obviously 100% that all of those who are contacts with this patient will get COVID-19. They're just at highest risk. And so that's why they are contacted. They are given instructions. Those instructions are to uh, stay home for 14 days. Uh, that is the incubation period of COVID-19. And uh, so all of that is happening as we speak. Uh, I'd mentioned earlier uh, creativity. I, I mentioned uh, collaboration. I had mentioned uh, coming together. And uh, the, the, universe, the Texas A&M University School of Public Health has been outstanding in their willingness to come and help, volunteer, raise their hand, what can I do? And, uh, and so we are very grateful uh, for them. And uh, they have been helping out our epidemiologist here, uh, Dr. Yao and uh, doing a great job and so we're grateful for their help and, and that helps expedite uh, this process and to get you uh, those questions Kenny that uh, many have. Sonny, I believe you had a question that might have been. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, there's a reverb, so I couldn't really hear. Um, but our viewer wants to know, do you feel like we should be wearing gloves and masks when we go to the grocery store? Okay, thank you for that question, Sonny, and thank you for the viewer calling in and asking good questions that many have. Uh, that is not the recommendation. The recommendation is not to wear masks and gloves uh, everywhere we go. There, there's, there are multiple reasons for this. Uh, number one is that uh, the, the gloves and the masks that we wear become contaminated with wherever we are, with wh whatever is around. And uh, so there is a, uh, it, it's really just about effectiveness. But, but further, uh, we have a, a national, really global shortage of these materials. These materials are essential for those on the front lines, essential for those who are, uh, are diagnosing and caring for those who are, are, are infected with COVID-19. And so, um, so again, it, it kind of comes into uh, what works, what's reasonable, and then also what's appropriate in, in a resource-limited situation. And so that is not a recommendation. What is a recommendation is to use hand hygiene. Hand hygiene works. And so before going into a, um, a public place, we should be using hand hygiene. And on the way out of a public place, we should be using hand hygiene, perhaps in between times as well, uh, as appropriate. And so uh, I, I recommend everybody have access to an alcohol-based desanitizer, uh, to uh, soap and water, and to wash their hands, as, as you've, have you've seen uh, throughout, this, uh, throughout these recommendations the past several weeks. Kathleen from KBTX here. Uh, last night, the governor said that his order did not apply to churches, yet on Wednesday evening on KBTX, the mayors of Bryan and College Station said that, that their municipal orders did apply to churches. So I'm just hoping that perhaps Mayor Nelson can, can clear up exactly what applies to us here in Bryan and College Station. Yes, thank you. The question is that uh, the governor's order, um, you know, governor's order and our local orders regarding 10 or more gathering and whether it applies to churches. Uh, the answer is yes, it does apply to churches. Um, any 10 or more uh, inside in a confined space. Understand the, the issue here is we're not looking for loopholes. We're not looking for, uh, you know, does it apply to me? Am, am I, I'm not a gym. I'm not a recreational facility. I'm, I'm really an exercise facility, and that's not for recreation. That's to make sure I'm in good health. Uh, guys, if you're in a confined space, if you're 10 or more, you're going to be spreading this disease at this point. That is the best technical advice, that uh, medical advice that we're being given. Uh, unless you have an essential need to be 10 or more in a confined space, don't do it. Um, you know, let's all pray. Uh, let's do that. Uh, but there's a reason why most of the churches are heeding that recommendation, whether it's a requirement statewide or not. 
Um, certainly we are compassionate, we understand that there are a lot of things people need to do. I've been working with funeral uh, directors, uh, giving them guidance on being outside, what is confined when you're in an outside area. Uh, you know, and, and again, I'd love D Dr. Sullivan to correct me, uh, please, if I've got it wrong, but I'm telling them if you're doing a funeral, for example, if you spread your arms out and the closest person to you spreads their arms out and you can't touch each other, you're probably fine outside right now. Um, let's just be smart about it. We're trying to keep this to a shorter term public health crisis. The way to do that is to break this chain of passing on this highly contagious uh, virus from one person to the other. Uh, and, and for the most part, I want to thank, uh, and, and not just Brian, I've had people, you know, at this time people call you if they know you in, in either city. So I'm sure Mayor Mooney and, and Judge are helping me and Brian the way I'm helping people throughout the county and, and College Station. But uh, the answer is yes, it does apply to you. Uh, but in all cases, we need you to just use your, uh, we won't say common sense, that's based on common experience and none of us has gone through this before. Let's use the advice that you're being given very clearly uh, from your health experts, uh, and I won't go through them all, but you know them, you know the websites, you guys can reiterate them, but yes, it applies to that. It applies to um, healthcare facilities that are 10 or more. That's another question I'm getting a lot. If you're nine or under, it does not apply to you because again, we're trying to keep this gathering uh, from confined spaces to less than 10. Uh, Dr. Sullivan. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, uh, and, and Kathleen, it's, it's a good question, and, and, and from the scientific perspective, I would love to say that the virus has the same reverence for our worship places that we do, and, uh, and unfortunately, this is, uh, these are our tough calls. We understand how critical, how critical our places of worship are to us, and, and, and so uh, I have been, again, inspired and impressed with, uh, with virtual prayer meetings that are ongoing, with you know, this virus can't stop our spirit. It can't stop our connection. And that, that's, that's happening. We're, we're getting around that. We're smarter than this virus. And so, uh, again, I, I applaud all of those who are, uh, are, are, again, implementing these things to protect the vulnerable. That is what this is about. And, and in doing these things uh, in, in creative ways. All right, and we have time for one more question, please. This is Bill Oliver. This question, uh, Kenny, what? Uh, status of the uh, six uh, patients. There was a reference earlier uh, this week, or maybe it was last week, to uh, patients uh, having uh, mild and or moderate symptoms and, and at least one uh, being able to recover at home. Is that the case now for, for all six? They're, what's the status of their symptoms and, and if they're all staying at home or, or if any are in medical facilities? Uh, yes, I'm going to answer your question, Bill. I'll also answer your question, Kenny. You guys, uh, you guys tied, so so we'll get both of you. Uh, Bill, uh, your question was about the status of the six who are uh, who are at home. Uh, to my knowledge, right now during this press conference, they are all well. Uh, I am um, I'm anxious to hear about them. I, I want to ensure that they're doing well. We have calls going out to them. Uh, obviously, uh, our prayers, our, our thoughts, everything uh, that we can support them with, we, we, we do. Um, I have been impressed with their, uh, with their obedience to, to, to what's happening. They, they've done a great job. They've done what they've been asked to do, and they've been wonderful citizens. And so um, I'm grateful to, to all of these six cases who, uh, who have, have shown us uh, the right way to do this. And uh, Kenny, uh, we'll, get a, we'll, we'll, we'll get a little bit of reverb out of the phone and then we'll get to your question and uh, we'll be done for this, uh, this afternoon session. Thanks so much, Dr. Sullivan. So this question uh, is for Mayor Nelson and for Judge Peters. Um, wanting to know for readers, viewers, listeners, what do you want those folks to know about city and county services, how 
those departments and officials are working in this time considering social distancing and other health concerns. So this question okay, I've got that question. The question is how are we handling uh, city services at this time given social distancing? We are doing everything we can to take the recommendations that we're receiving and the, we're following our own orders. Um, there are obviously exceptions in the medical profession where we have to be in close uh, contact with a patient, an urgent patient. Um, there are times when the cities in, in delivering emergency services need to do that. I think it's obvious someone's in a serious car accident, we can't not be uh, helping the victim. Uh, there's, there's other examples, but I can tell you all essential services are up and running. The city of Bryan is alive and well. Um, at the end of the day, no matter how, you know, we, we all rely on um, water, electricity, sewer. Um, we need to know that we have hospitals that are operationally functional. Obviously, that is the basic heartbeat that every citizen is counting on right now, and you can rest assured that we are, um, that we are open for business with all those essential activities. Um, I have heard nothing different from uh, Mayor Mooney in College Station. I can uh, be, be happy to have uh, Judge Peters answer for himself, but we're doing, we're doing well with that. Um, you know, there are protocol changes in the city. We are taking measures so that uh, non-essential staff, uh, that people who can uh, work from home who are not essential to be in the office where we don't, uh, they, they can't work um, well unless they're in the office, they remain. We are taking all of the, the, the uh, precautions that we need to take to, to be prudent and safe at this time. Um, we are also, we have changed some protocols. Uh, obviously, uh, if there's a lot of calls for COVID, if, if we don't have, you know, life-threatening type um, um, calls in, uh, we would rather those people contact their doctor instead of, uh, you know, just calling an ambulance and going to the emergency room. We don't need to overburden people with, with non-essential, non-life-threatening activities like that. So there are also some changes to some of our protocols because of this situation, but we are all up and running uh, in, in, uh, in the way that we need uh, so that citizens can count on us. Um, non-essential activities, those things are closed. Um, right now at the city, our buildings are closed, our facilities are closed. So the things that you're counting on us at this time to deliver, we're there. Uh, the things that uh, are bonuses uh, in this time, uh, we, are, we are only doing if we can safely do so. Judge Peters. It's much the same with the county. We've closed to the public. Uh, we still have, there, we've, have essential services that uh, r remain in operation. Uh, we have skeleton crews uh, with road and bridge just in case something comes up. We were to happen to get a storm in or something and we get uh, limbs on the roads or something. We ha we're prepared for all that sort of thing, but in general we have uh, only essential uh, uh, staff that uh, still man either uh, virtually or in some cases in the offices, uh, but we're close to the public. Uh, the, I mean, certainly, uh, you know, the jail and, and, uh, and the sheriff's office, we maintain those uh, public safety uh, features and they still operate as they have in the past. Uh, the one thing I can think of that I'd like to remind folks that Judge Smith reminded us the other day, uh, while there are no jur juries going, jury trials going on it uh, currently, uh, if, uh, if you receive a jury summons, uh, you need to respond back to it and fill out uh, that, uh, whether, whether you do it online or send it in, but you need to respond back to it because once we get past this, and we will, uh, we wouldn't want to be, uh, we wouldn't want to have jury trials uh, closed for the next three months or uh, however long. So as long as you continue to do that, respond back to those things, then we will, uh, we will be able to crank back up and begin to get the courts back in system in the system and working so I'd remind citizens of that but we are close to the public but we, we keep the essential uh, services open and, and ready to go to work all right and thank you judge Peters thank you Sherry thank you mayor Nelson and uh, and, and a shout out to uh, mayor Mooney as well for all the coordination that's going on uh, uh, behind behind closed doors for the safety of all of us and I appreciate all of your efforts I appreciate uh, you and the media for getting out this information. I uh, want to especially thank those here at the Brazos County Health District who are working overtime. And, uh, and, and I also want to thank uh, all the healthcare workers in town right now who are doing the same. 
And uh, I, again, I'm inspired by all that's happening. Uh, please, uh, listening today, get this information out. This information is literally life-saving for our vulnerable brothers and sisters in Brazos County. I uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all Monday uh, at 4.30. Thank you.